504. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start. Okay. Hello and welcome everyone to the Be Waste Wise webinar of the month. Uh, I am Akanksha Singh. I'm the community builder at Be Waste Wise. Uh, let me give you a brief introduction on our organization. Uh, we are tired of the same people talking about uh, the same thing and expecting change. So we set up uh, Be Waste Wise. It is a non-profit organization to grow around the principles of uh, dialogue and diversity, addressing the need for knowledge dissemination on waste management since uh, 2013. Dialogue is different from the bite-sized information. It is uh, for us, it is the opposite of one-way dissemination. Uh, diversity, on the other hand, means actively looking for uh, new groups of people and uh, new ways of knowing and thinking in order to learn more about the world. So, basis this concept, we started with one moderator in 2013, and now we have uh, more than 12 moderators till last year who are among the best at what they do, and they come from different parts of our world and society. Together, uh, they are posing questions, uh, teasing out insights and guiding conversations that are more relevant to us and those in other online offline places. We have more than uh, 300 contributors uh, so far who have taken part in this journey. And one such eminent and learned moderator we have with us is uh, Dr. Brijesh Dubey. He is uh, presently associate professor in the Division of Environmental Engineering and Management at IIT Kharagpur. And he has more than a decade of research, teaching, and industrial outreach experience in the areas of uh, integrating solid and hazardous waste management, groundwater and surface water quality issues, and so on. Dr. Dubey has been moderating uh, Be Waste Wise uh, webinars for mm -hmm. many years now. And today, uh, on this very important and very crucial discussion, he is going to talk to three very learned experts from the industry. Uh, Mr. Surujit Bose, who is the head of uh, sustainability at Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages, uh, with more than 25 years in sustainability and climate change experience. Uh, Ms. Lakshmi Raghupati, an environmentalist who has uh, extensively worked in environmental impact assessment. And uh, Mr. Prabjot Sodhi, who has uh, also worked for more than 12 years in the implementation of circular economy. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, panel uh, with so much experience, uh, we have today a discussion on uh, on a very crucial topic, analyzing the status of uh, EPR models for plastics and the status of SOP management in India. And we will, uh, during this course of webinar, we'll understand briefly from these experts uh, the economic environmental cost benefit implication, as well as understand its social and economic repercussions. Uh, before we further uh, you know, go ahead with the discussion, we would request you all to know that this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded and posted on our YouTube channel and our website. Uh, please use the Q&A section for your questions to the panel. And we would encourage everybody to post as many queries as possible to this panel and get it sorted on this forum. And uh, we would request you all to use the chat function to let us know where all you are joining from, which department, where are you from? Is there, if there are any comments that you have for the panel, please use a chat function for that. So back to the topic, Dr. Dubey, what is the real status of EPR models and SUP management in India? Over to you. So thank you. Thank you, Akancha, for uh, the wonderful introduction to our program today. So as, as you heard, uh, this is essentially focusing on plastics. So we'll try to understand the EPR model. And we are be talking in the Indian context of course, some international thing may come into the discussion as well. So as we all know, plastic as a material actually has helped us a lot in different things that we do from our, from our day to day affairs. We have been using variety of plastic products and we have been producing a lot of uh, uh, plastic, uh, uh, like as a plastic polymer, plastic uh, different uh, products. And over the years, the number has gone up, but we haven't done a very good job in terms of managing this waste coming out of from this particular uh, stream. So plastic waste has become a problem. And the other issue is the too much usage of single use plastic. So too much usage of single use plastic is also another big issue that we have been wrestling with. So uh, in this particular webinar for next uh, hour, uh, we will hear from, as you heard that we'll hear from three experts on uh, like what is what is like we, we are talking about EPR. So what is this EPR and how this EPR can help us better manage the plastic waste? And then what are the what are the things happening in the packaging sector? 
uh, how, what are the innovations happening in packaging sector? Like how, uh, what are the newer products coming up which can potentially replace plastic? Although there has been a lot of greenwashing also happening. Recently, you may, many of you may have heard that Bureau of Indian Standard, they said that actually there is no, uh, like a biodegradable plastic in the market as of today. There are compostable plastic out there which gets composted only in industrial scale composter. So, that also we have to look at when we are moving to the alternatives, are they really good? How, how good they are? So those kind of issues. Then what is the complications on the ground? Like how to uh, make things happen on the ground? As you heard from Akansha, the focus here is to more of a dialogue, learning from each other. Like, of course, we have three eminent speakers, but we would like to learn from our uh, uh, like people who are participating, who are listening to this, uh, we want you to put up question. We want to put up some uh, your suggestions as well, like some good practices that you are seeing or you are being involved in, so that we all learn from each other, and then we can take this forward. Like uh, uh, if, how a better uh, implementation of EPR, as well as proper management of SUP, like single-use plastic, which is a big deal out there. So without uh, being further delay, I would go ahead and uh, uh, get this uh, discussion started. So first we will have 10 minutes uh, presentation from each of our panelists uh, talking about uh, the topic, the uh, subtopic, and then we will open up the question and answer. So first I will invite uh, uh, Mr. Surajit Bose. So uh, uh, Mr. Bose, the uh, floor is yours for next 10 minutes. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone. I understand that there are folks who have joined internationally as well. Uh, uh, firstly, thanks to Professor Dubey Yu, regards to Mr. Sodhi, as well as Dr. Raghupati. Thank you so much, WasteWise team, for inviting. Hindustan Coca-Cola Beverages, we are a large FMCG company of 6,000 employees, 250,000 farmers, 4,300 partners, 25 lakh retailers. And what I'm going to share with you with respect to extended producers responsibility is from the perspective of, you know, having looked at uh, packaging waste and uh, how to, uh, you know, imbibe what is in the regulation with the global practice that we have, the philosophy of world without waste, which is an international philosophy around design, collect and partner. And I'm happy to tell you that good progress has been made over the years from 2016 when the law came. And we see a lot of synergy with respect to what's happening globally and what we are doing in India. So I try to divide this entire period of our experience into three different parts, as you can see on the slide. First was you know, a great learning for us on different EPR models and how the registration took place to bring everybody on the same platform. The second phase, probably was where the science-based EPR targets took place. And the third one is on the digitization and circularity, where we are actually headed in terms of our journey. So in the very first phase, we experimented with a number of collection models, wanted to understand what are the ground realities, how to bring about social inclusion, the, the waste pickers, you know, Safai Sathis, how to include them the informal sector into this entire collection basis. We had a lot of challenges and we faced them and we understood and learned that different types of plastics get collected at different points in time. There was an experimentation also with the material recovery facilities, what its design should be, how it should be executed. And of course, as corporates, we also try to understand what is the cost of compliance to the extended producer's responsibility. Without a doubt, we realized that traceability and documentation is key to be able to look at the entire value chain of where the plastic is being picked up from, how it is transported, and finally with GST invoice, et cetera, how it goes to the recycler, and finally it gets recycled. When we move to phase two, you know, we find that there is a great understanding of the fact that all plastics are not the same. And the law then finally defines that there are three different types of plastics, the rigid, flexible, and multi-layered. And also with that, the kind of collection models that could be possible in a diverse country such as India are humongous. So it also allowed, the law allowed all kinds of brands and producers to also look at different collection models. 
the single use plastics definitely needed to be banned and there is no two way about it because most of these were not being picked up and rightly so the science said that either you go to an alternative for example we moved to paper straws and that was the right thing to do the law recognizes today the reuse recycling the recycle plastic content end of life all these are part of the overall circular economy policy that is being driven globally and india has very nicely enshrined that into the legislation also came the important aspects of labeling and environmental compensation which also is required to herd the industry towards this entire aspect of understanding the responsibility of epr which is for the producer to have an environmentally sound management of the product until the end of its life all this led to deeper connect between the regulator and the industry and that was very important for the interpretation of the laws and the convergence across all the states and that is something that from an industry i have seen happen in a very very proactive fashion for hccb we had our senior management set the target of collecting and recycling 100% although the targets were 25% 70% and so on right weighting of the packaging is a continuous activity for which we saved around 3500 tons of plastic then also not just looking at primary but also secondary plastic post consumer recycling how we can include more and more recycled content that is where our endeavors have been it is a third phase where we now see digitization and the growth of circularity coming up in a very big way and the first point on erp to epr essentially our sap systems have to now give data for the kind of plastics that we are procuring so that there is a material balance which can be done across the nation through this very extensive digitization process there is a wallet that exists where recyclers can put credits on behalf of the brand owners and the application programming interface is required now to bring everybody on the same digital portal this will certainly help in getting the material balance which is so essential and to be linked with the gst taxes so that one has a very clear idea of the flow of plastic within the economy then we come to the recycle content and reuse which is a target that will kick in from 2025 but this requires very serious innovation in terms of the recycling technology the kind of capacity that exists then the food safety authority the techno commercial analysis that needs to be done on the availability and the quality of feed stock the the kind of compostable plastics which are entering for example increasingly straws are now compostable and then alternate material for example a glass is something that is also growing together uh, with you know different kinds of you know plastic recycled content so does that lead to lower carbon emissions because as you all know science based targets packaging is a very very important component of that and of course there would be the packaging credits the epr credits which is built into the law and will be a fact of life going forward and also there'll be carbon credits which probably will also have an impact on financing some of the difficult to do technologies before i sign off i must tell you the importance of blockchain traceability on figuring out this entire flow of plastics right from where it is collected whom it has benefited how many jobs it would have probably created and finally how it has breached the recycler and on circularity and social metrics it would be vital now to look at how the economy the circular economy and its impetus on low carbon development as well as the creation of jobs can actually deliver the fillip to the circularity of plastics going forward we know that the pet recycling industry in india is already a 100 billion dollar industry and it employs some 80 lakh people what we see is that if done correctly going forward over the next decade or so this has tremendous opportunity for low carbon development as well as the the creation of jobs with these initial comments i will hand it over back to professor dube thank you so much
Thank you, uh, Mr. Bose, for your uh, initial uh, comment. And uh, we started seeing some questions coming up already on that. We'll, we'll get to that uh, later. So uh, we'll uh, get to the next speaker now, uh, Madam uh, Lakshmi uh, Rapupati. It's your floor is yours for now for the next 10 minutes. So please uh, go ahead. You are on mute, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. You have to go to the first slide, huh? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, because of which part of the world they are. So everybody, and welcome to this. And thank you very much, Dr. Dubey and the b waste uh, wise group for having given me an opportunity to speak in this occasion. But when Dr. Dubey gave me the areas to speak, I thought it, I'll manage it, but it's, it's too vast. So I'm going to stick to few things, few salient features. So maybe some, um, I'll give, uh, trigger some questions from the audience. If not, we'll have another session on packet. Packaging is a very huge thing which has to be done. So anyway, the, basically I'll speak on both the issues, the single use plastics as well as packaging. Next, please. Uh, we are in, at the lowest, we are at the lowest in terms of consumption of plastics. Still, though it is a 14, 15 figure, today also we stand around 10th and 11th position. Next, please. Which is about 10% of US consumption. So when we are worried about the plastic carry bags as well as the single use plastics. That's what is the worry for us today. And next, please. In 2018, when we were the host for the uh, World Environment Day, during the Beat the Plastic Pollution, we had already seen that 50% of our plastic is a single use and disposable plastic, which is going to the environment without be, uh, being aware of it at that point of time. But at that point of time, the Beat the Plastic concept had the uh, beat the plastic pollution concept had the perspective of dealing with the um, single use plastic. Next, please. These are the components of SUP, the single use plastic. All of you know. Next, please. So be, there are certain global definitions because the origin of plastic is from petrochemicals. For the single use plastic, we commonly think those plastics and we had uh, lived in the comfort of using single use plastic for quite some time now, more than five decades. And these plastics are something which just used it once and throw away without realizing what are the repercussions. And now we are facing the whole uh, consequence and the non-biodegradability of it was the most thing and things coming back, especially due, due to the um, uh, floating into the water bodies and coming back into the uh, surfacing into the um, shores. Next, please. And there are a couple of definitions because I've just put it here so that everybody can refer to it at one place. There is a UK UN UNEP definitions which we follow, and that is the single use plastic which are disposable. Just take it for granted, it's disposable. And maximum single use plastics is, are used in packaging as of UN definition. But I have certain other add on perspective which I'll speak about. UK has a separate definition. Next, please. US has their own definition. Then we have we have put as a commodity, single-use plastic commodity means plastic intended to use for once only and dispose of. But in India, we never do that. We even a single-use plastic, we try to see if we can use it again. We, we wash it and use it. So it's it's not in the correct the perspective of single-use plastic that we have been using. But definitely we've been discarding a lot of plastics. Next, please. So when we say this, these are the few because when we brought out the, we had actually banned the, we have a plethora of plastic regulations. The result we need to wait till July 23. 
because in one year when the annual returns are filed, because most of the people are complying to the regulations, once they file the annual return, is the compliance. Next, please. And these are the items, the water bottles, spoons, forks, carry bags, wipes, straws, the, the earbuds, etc. Uh, so the, the basic thing, a basic objective of banning or phasing out the single-use plastic was to get over the plastic pollution, which is being caused extensively. It's not only in India, but the whole world is suffering because of the plastic pollution. Next, please. But when we have really seen that these are the items that have been banned, this band, that is the straw, cutlery, earbuds, packing, package films. And Indian government, whenever I have been in the ministry for 21 years, uh, whenever we notify, we try to see which are the things which are really uh, when we notified hazardous waste, when we notified plastic waste, etc., the most uh, um, concerned item will be will will have to be notified and so that is how we can do it because in one stroke of pen if we, um, Mr. Sodi will be talking about his experience on ground but definitely we know but to bring together the industry as well as the community to really participate in this activity, there have been a there have been a very big struggle, and it's not only it started. It did not start with the single use plastic phasing or notification, but ever since the plastic waste rules were notified in 2016, there have been sequence of activities. Next, please. Next, yeah. These are the plethora of plastic waste rules the 2016 rules 2018 please pre previous one 2018 amendments previous one please yeah then we had the amendment in 2021 then there is a specific notification for epr about which i think mr bose has already highlighted certain points but there have been there is a little bottleneck because there are multiple targets assigned in that that is one of the things which is which is causing a lot of problem. People do not know which target to follow because the targets have to be very clear, clearly spelled out. Otherwise, in India, we did we, we notified targets for batteries. It did not work. We notified targets for um, uh, other ways. It did not work because we did we did not give us clear cut picture of the target and facing out. E waste also we notified targets. It did not work. So we have to ensure that that works. Then the uh, plastic waste management rules of 22 2022 july 22 is the one where sup is uh, there and then there are guidelines for the epr so there is there is a more concentration on bringing in the effective role of epr in the post consumer waste which is the plastic waste next please next okay this is the exact amendment and these are the items that have been amended now, only one here, the future, the few, few of the future slides, next, 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 would be basically there have been very stringent actions that have been um, implied in this. The, and the uh, uh, message has gone to the people. First is the direction under section five, where there will be a lot of uh, repercussion from the industry because the major industries come under the net, but the minor ones, the smaller ones, or the um, recycling industries are not coming under this, where they have actually issued the uh, section five notification where electricity, water, and all is cut for the people who are not complying with the regulations. Next, please. Then also the, the system has been established. For the first time, any of the ways where we needed the system, there has been a system established here. The National Task, for, task Force is constituted and also the state level task forces are there, special task forces are there. And they have been regularly meeting and they've been preparing the action plan. So that means the enforcement sta has started ever since in July or even before that because they were visualizing the ban to occur. So there have been some ground activities. Next, please. 
people were knowing about people were thinking that which plastic but still there is an identity problem today i saw a small video which, do, which dr dubey had shared with us in whatsapp there he showed very clearly the plastic that the container that he had in his hand and it's a recyclable container definitely we need to have that kind of a labeling which is not possible for this plastic which is coming under the single use plastic then there has been certain activities local activities and national level activities there's a national dashboard for monitoring the compliances where the reporting system has been planned and almost all the compliance in indicators and information is going to be fed into it the formats are provided in the regulation next please then the the two things that have been uh, put here is the uh, single use plastic as well as the carry bags because the carry bags which are less than 75 microns now the thickness has been increased 75 microns are also coming under the net so there has been some checks conducted and the interstate movement and other things have been penalized. There have been uh, rigorous activity in terms of penalizing, and they have also collected some um, um, uh, money for that because whosoever is doing um, underground activity, their their activity, their, their, they no longer are allowed to recycle or carry these materials across the state. Next, please. So there have been the monitoring system is in place. So we, we are sure that it something will be happening next, next, next. Yeah, the packaging is most important because as we know, the packaging has got three or four elements. One of the packaging, of course, uh, the Coca-Cola is one of the bigger, play, biggest player in the packaging. They have succeeded in many things in terms of everything comes under packaging. Nothing we receive anywhere from the um, uh, uh, shops that we receive everything we receive in with packaging and packaging is a very big activity and uh, what sort of packaging that comes is mostly it is the food waste packaging the medicines and uh, the, the uh, uh, pharmaceuticals then also the medical practices which need certain packaging are all the issues where there is a lot of single use plastic being used and these are the packagings where you cannot do overnight anything so it takes it will take quite some time next please i'll show a couple of pictures on the packaging these are the types of packaging the three packaging the primary secondary and tertiary packaging the primary packaging is very difficult to be tapped as of now the tertiary packaging is something which can be collected back and recycled for so it is uh, recyclable material the secondary packaging is something which they are they, we, which brings the uh, number of units together so the sort of consolidation of units is possible in the secondary packaging where you put stack the material so that means you reduce the material used in packaging so the packaging has got three aspects one is the material used the design of the packaging because the design should be such that you can reuse the package or uh, recycle it and the material that is used it should be recyclable material and third one is something which you cannot do where there is a combination of material next please <clears throat> now these are all the different types of packaging types of packaging that is available this uh, the uh, jerry cans the tins the plastics the pouches etc next please for each one there is a different this discussion different requirements now when i call it a sustainable packaging there are a few aspects here the sana or the sustain the packaging which is sustainable packaging made out of hemp which is a recyclable material, which gives a very good value for the product and it can be used for packaging many things, including the uh, very sophisticated material. The glass is something which we were already using. So it's like going back for glass. So if you can replace the plastic with glass, the wood packaging is there. Then moreover, this wood, wood also has the wood shaving. Similarly is the husk the uh, the material which is used from the agriculture agro waste is also used for packaging instead of thermocol the one first thing which is replaced in packaging is the uh, fillers the thermocols have, and plastics have been replaced by natural material then this right uh, can shows that you can open the cash can and reuse 
which is an Indian custom. We always reuse. So it's very convenient to put back the things and use it for something else. So these are a few examples of sustainable packaging. We uh, Next one, please. <coughs> And these are also a part of the sustainable packaging where we are going back to yesterday. The packaging, which was better earlier, we learned from that. So it's only revisiting our old time activities and we try to see, and now at least in my house, I've replaced the plastics with the glass. So we should, we can do that. And glass handling, we think we break. No, it doesn't break like that. It's, it's quite durable. So we can, the shelf problem is there because in stacking, one of the important things, plastics are very convenient to stack. And once you seal it with the um, tight, airtight um, uh, lids, then it becomes safe, but definitely we can go for it. So it's walking back in times to going back to things. Similarly is the medical system. Medical system is having, we are so much used to this possible and huge amount of medical waste is generated because of the packaging and the use of disposable possible or single use. So if we can go back to the glass syringes and sterilizable material, medical also we can manage. Next, please. This is again the sustainable packaging made out of recycled paper. Next, please. In new plastics economy, a vision is there to eliminate. So that is what is SUP. When we do, when we say single use plastic, we want to eliminate Next one is innovate and third one is circulate. So innovation is trying to innovate something from future, something from past, saying that something which can be good to environment be used. And third is circulate. Best is to have an introduction of circular economy, things moving. I, I'm sure Dr. Josh uh, Sodhi will be talking about it. So eliminate is the only process where we are now at present to remove the single use plastic. Next, please. I think uh, last one. So the other part is as rightly uh, Dr. Dubey said, there's nothing is uh, biodegradable. Compostable plastics are there and compostable, uh, some, some places in one of the visuals I had also shown some compostable plastics. So that compostable plastics are only, the best quality is that they are degradable to a certain extent and they are, can be composted and in an, a, because of the, uh, the organic matter in it and they, uh, they enter into the environment though slow, but they are able to go back to the environment without harming any, uh, releasing any toxic or obnoxious residues. That is why they are compostable and that is safe for using. And CPCV has already listed out. The list is available in CPCV website. Next, please. I think I'm done with it. So green packaging solutions, whether we do it today or yesterday, whatever, wherever we go, we can definitely come for a sustainable packaging and so, uh, so these two things are very heavy so I have just brushed through so I am expecting some questions so that I can give them I can go into the into deep, deeper meaning of it thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you very much and we already have lots of questions already there uh, there's probably you can see more than 20 questions are already waiting for us so we'll uh, have a uh, uh, Dr. Sodhi, thank you for, uh, for, it, yeah, for his uh, presentation and then we'll jump into the question. Yeah. Dr. Sodhi, thank you, Dr. Duve and uh, Kanksha. So kind of you to have put together this talk with all my fellow colleagues, Surajit and Lakshmi, Dr. Lakshmi Raghupati. So what I do is uh, I'm seeing that there are a lot of questions around life cycle approach that plastic is better and glass is not good and this is bad and this is good. But anyway, that's, uh, that's a different question altogether. Yes, you are right in your own ways of life cycle approaches. But this topic is very interesting. Demystifying extended producer responsibility uh, in plastics. Uh, so what I'm going to do is run you through some slides. Next, please. Uh, and you know, Dr. Dubey, as you know, today used oil uh, also has... Uh, got the EPR into the domain and uh, we are getting into uh, a new domain for the EPRs in many sectors across. 
But coming back to it, the plastic rules and timelines has already been discussed, but there has been the latest amendment in April 2023 in the plastics. But next slide, please. This has already been covered by both of the speakers, so I'll just sort of miss it. Next slide, please. So I think so. I must congratulate the government of India uh, that they are coming up with innovation and bringing in people's perspective into framing of these guidelines. It's, yes, it took two years to EPR, and I was a part of this whole domain, uh, along with Surajit and Lakshmi ji there in the meetings. And this EPR uh, really makes significant decisions. You know, it gives you clear definitions. It's got obligated entities on what is PIPO's rule and responsibilities, and also of the plastic waste processes, they define that. I must say it is one of those which really need to be read over and over again in order to gain confidence on the very ticks of the whole show. It talks about registration. It talks about targets of category-wise across the producers, importers, brand owners, and plastic waste processors. It talks about how the trading of the surplus EPRs can be done, how carry forward offsetting. I mean, you name it and the thought process has gone into it. The reason it took, talks about environmental compensation, it talks about prosecution rights. So it is giving authenticity, traceability, and a fair conduct of just ways of managing the stakeholders. It talks about fulfillment of the EPR obligation, centralized online portal. Yes, there are many difficulties we all are facing. We all are facing, but I think so. This is just the start of it. And there are going to be more amendments which are going to take place over time. So don't get restless. Be a part of the show and enjoy the show. There is a committee which has been formed. There are, as Dr. Lakshmi and Surajit both mentioned it, to oversee where lies the bottlenecks. So I'll raise some of the challenges off ground since last uh, 10 years I have been into this and we were the first ones to establish material recovery facilities. And that time there was no thought process around it that these are sorting and segregation center and they should be necessary part of life. Let's go to the next slide, Akanksha. Uh, so some of the challenges which we have, my colleagues, you know, Videsh, Vinal and Vidya, we did a, a, a very good exercise by the State Pollution Control Board of Rajasthan, where we were doing the inventorization. And Dr. Dubey, you were there as well. So you were a part of the show, you know. So, so where we were trying to assess what, who are the different stakeholders in the ecosystem and what are their problems. I've just list, listed a couple of them. So recyclers, which form a very important uh, stakeholder in the whole show, uh, do not have a greater understanding of the EPRs. And people who go with little knowledge and try and really, uh, the indulgence is in a, such a way that the other person gets terrified. Oh my God, this is a law. These are going to be, so it's not, so, so I think so your very top topic demystifying is very important. So clear understanding of the EPRs need to be brought to the recyclers with the state pollution control boards and the various associations. I'm also on the board of MRAI, Material Recycling Association of India. Every day they are thinking how we can bring different stakeholders into this program. So no centralized data on recycling units in the state. This is a very, very big issue. And I think so this needs to be flagged that we need to get a centralized system of recycling units even MRAI, we can give you the total data of the 22,000 uh, uh, recycling units and which cuts across different sectors, ferrous to non-ferrous, steel and uh, batteries and e-waste and you name it and they are there. So I think so that's a brilliant um, uh, entity which we all should become members to it. It's uh, very easy to become members to it and we become a part of the show. The other big issue which I see in the recycler side is that there are small informal recyclers and they are making dana collection is there. They purchase it and there is a whole lot of affluence residues and emissions in and across 
of the we call it uh, microplastic you go to these units and see and i think so suraji there is a big job that we have at hand and we need to combine to see that how all these four issues of effluents residues emissions and energy consumption is taken care of how the informal to formal ek jagah mein baat kar raha tha to usne mujhe kaha he said ke sir hum to we were within the city 30 years back and the city has outgrown so don't ban our industry we are not created we were far 25 years back we were outside the city you have to create incentives to become a part of the show how can we register unless and until we are not provided with the spacing mind you the top government official was sitting there and he took a decision on the spot that this needs to be done no further extension to the increased capacities of those recyclers but we will help them to become registered that sort of a positive proactive approach needs to be taken place in states co processing we were visiting my colleague sitting next to me vidya was visiting these uh, co processing sites in the state of rajasthan mixed waste is coming as rdf high moisture content low chlorophyll value heavy maintenance is required how to co process this waste that's why it is declined not taken in and then here and there it goes uh, so these are uh, real practical issues people are using wood stock to create the chlorophyll value at the co processing zones ulbs there is lack of required end to end processing facilities available there is a gap available in this they are very warm and welcoming they are very keen that good agencies to come and see how those can link we were supported through the coca cola when i was in my previous assignment and today we are supported by hdfc bank and uh, hul was also there a part of it and we really partnered with the ulbs today also and we get the best of the support they are very keen to learn what can be their waste processing system what the mrf should contribute and today government of india is thinking of mrf as a clean clear source in cities and they are multiplying they, they are not saying we need to have big mrfs we need to have decentralized and pick up the best practices less involvement we really need to see good business organizational approaches to revenue generating models it is sincerely a good revenue model which can come up small aggregators they are a problem and that's another area which we really need to put the uh, thought process in that how knowledge information laws and assistance can be extended to these kabadi walas they are a part of our system and society and they need to be strengthened because they are doing a fantastic job how can we register them under msmes why they should come into a clear channel of uh, can not a cash based transaction but coming up into the so much of gst is being lost on this as a revenue to the government next slide please so these are the big time challenges but i'll take you through the actual slides these are some of the various uh, interrogations we did dr dubey also running into the slush in rajasthan and that was good only thing dr dubey which didn't go wrong was we never fell in that dump site you know otherwise we would have enjoyed and i should, next time you are there i'm going to push you in don't you push me so scrap dealers how the manufacturers are playing the role these are all the part of the whole system ecosystem and we need to really impact on this ecosystem the cpr is trying to bring an impact to this ecosystem and that's why i say it is one of the most wonderful systems which has been practically listened and implemented next please so this is a waste characterization which we were doing in the state of rajasthan where our people were really putting the dump and then we were coming out uh, so this is how, how we did this in rajasthan more than 120 different one in the in different income zones next please <clears throat> and i've got just two more slides so this is one slide i wanted to say you about how how our system is getting affected sources of plastic in our own house it is packaging it is home accessories stationery medicine bakeries confectioneries cloth cosmetics vegetable how can we get to reduce this whole system that is on us as individuals and the upper ones shows door to door collection in bungalows there is only <clears throat> uh, twice a, uh, it is daily done 
but as you go down the line the you see the orange going down and when you come to jhuggi jhopdi the informal side every day collection is also not done so people are not tuned to throw where where do i throw i will generate every day but it's not collected so i will strew it it will go to the litter so these are some of the issues which really need to be brought in and the epr is trying to impact on them they are trying to build this whole system next please and this is the last slide what more thoughts need to be required i was seeing one of the thoughts certainly which worries me which is not written there is gst on the recycled plastic is equal into the virgin plastic i don't know how many times we have said that and wherever it is we as a community should get together to see there is no incentive for using the recycled content yes there is still problems there on verification and standards but this is an issue which needs to be compostables and biodegradables already dr dube and all the other members have said it i strongly believe 10 years from now we will be in serious content unless and until the international color coding is given to the compostables and biodegradable differently we have orange we have red we have green we have blue you name it we have and we have to come into an international color coding for compostables and biodegradables as you said it biodegradability is not going to happen e so easily as we envisage even for compostables i see that there are certain problems uh, we have to have a decentralized system you see one thing which worries me doc saab i'll not take more than two more minutes but one thing is that the city planning we make habitats which define schools markets hospitals everything in that habitat but when the waste is generated we take them away to the city dump site in one corner and the whole road trucks are flying all over and plying and the waste is flying all over why can't we have simple coding system of creating small dhalaus which we already have in city we can have small mrf 4000 generate huge number of jobs and it will generate huge number of small uh, business organizations and it can be against 40000 50000 household and these mrfs can be good sorting squaring centers recycling will come up anyway the informal sector is doing this another thing is we have to also come to see how decentralized recycling centers are developed for at least four aspects thin multi layered and also rigid which can be brought out and then of course the filaments and the films of uh, polypropylenes and stuff we are spinning circularity through these epr rules i'm not going to define let that be for a next topic and we will see how circularity is being brought in but certainly epr is bringing investments into waste and resource ecosystem i don't call it waste i want to call it as a resource ecosystem because everything there are new startups coming there are new business organizations coming new business approaches coming but if it is not happening we need to really encourage this to happen transparency and traceability is being built across and i don't know how many will will, will you agree with me that trading platforms where the investments are being made they also need to be made more transparent in order to see that when you are linking the buyers and sellers they are not dealing with uh, single use plastics because if that traceability is not broadening then the trading takes place for single use plastic and you encourage if the market encourages that then the trading will happen through informal production systems uh, last but the least uh, another 50 seconds is that this time the epr is right now not it is not it is it's absolutely geography freedom there but we need to have a collection system which encourages geography collection it may not go well with many people but i know but that's how life is so so check and balances are also to be there city level task force we should include uh, ulbs and setting up of various other ecosystem players into it next slide is a big thank you for everybody so kind to be with me thanks for the thank opportunity you. dr dubey thank you thank you sodhi saab and thank you to all the three panelists uh, for the like uh, initial uh, comments and uh, this like uh, giving the perspective to this particular topic so now we'll jump into the questions we have almost more than like 28 questions out there we'll i'll club few questions together and i will direct you 
uh, to the relevant uh, uh, panel uh, panelist. So we'll start with uh, uh, Mr. Bose, uh, since uh, there, there has been some questions on looking at uh, like initiative that Coca-Cola has taken in terms of reducing SUP. And also uh, in terms of, uh, there is a, since you talked about different phases, uh, they talk about that, have we achieved the target of phase two? We are moving to phase three now, but did we achieve the target of phase two in terms of EPR? Or uh, is it still work in progress? So if you want to talk about that. Great question. Thank you so much, Professor Dube. Uh, you know, in, in our system, the kind of plastics, as I said, you know, the targets are science-based today and they recognize rigid plastics, flexible and multi-layer plastics. Almost 96% of the total plastics are high valuable, very valuable, high value plastics, which are easily collected and enter our economy in terms of recycle. And uh, the SUPs that we encountered uh, were basically this plastic straws, okay? And we took very, very concerted effort to replace them with paper straws. So today, that was the only item as per the legislative uh, legislature, the, the SUPs that were identified, the straws is something that was the only SUP in our system, which we changed. The other question, the phase two, very good question. So as I mentioned, you know, the EPR targets were 25% in 2021 and 70% in 2022 you know, average of the last two years. But uh, the decision that was taken within the organization was to collect 100% of what we would put out into the, into the marketplace. So that was adhered to and a very, very robust system of checks and balances with respect to the traceability, uh, which is not a requirement of law at all. You know, the law actually requires recycler certificates, but we had to have this traceability system to ensure that all the plastic and the point to what Sodiji mentioned, even where it is picked up from in different states of India and how it finally finds its way to a registered recycler and that it is recycled. So it's our, it has been our endeavor from day one to ensure that this entire value chain is very well looked after and mapped with the economics of it. Hope it answers the question. Yeah, there is kind of a little bit follow up on that. There is a like uh, in terms of the label which is there on the bottle on the Coca Cola or any drink bottle uh, that some people are calling it is essentially it's a single use plastic because that label actually has not, not that value doesn't get uh, uh, and then all the all the same thing when you have ten bottles of Coca Cola it comes in a plastic wrap which is again could be a single use plastic so that those were uh, like uh, is there any in initiative to kind of work on that aspect uh, by the company. Again, a very good question. And I'll take the second one first. Uh, you know, the plastic wrapper that is a flexible plastic that is not single use plastic. That okay. is a permitted flexible plastic. And not, not only that, you know, our endeavor is to use more of uh, recycled content into it. So it's in our interest that we need to take it back because it's a valuable flexible plastic. That is called the string wraps and the stretch wrap. These are the two. These do not enter the public system. It directly from our depots, et cetera, would go directly to the recycler. And what was the other question, Professor Dube? The first It's one? the label. The label on the bottle. Uh, it's a see, the thin, thin plastic, which is not of that Correct. value. Yeah. So right. can we move to paper on that? That's what the question was. Very interesting question. And there is a lot of work happening around that. Uh, currently, based on, I mean, there's a lot of work happening in terms of also trying to emboss you know, like in a glass bottle, you can emboss the information and the logo and uh, more and more use of, uh, you know, QR codes is coming in as well to give information. While that is work in progress, as of now, together with the bottle, it gets collected from an EPR standpoint, you know. Okay. So that is something that will require innovation. But for now, it gets collected with the bottle and it is shredded and at the time of shredding, the labels are removed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bose. Uh, Ma'am, there was a question on, uh, on sustainable packaging, where some of the audience is saying that uh, since we're moving from these different alternatives now, 
but are we looking at from a life cycle perspective because uh, in terms of all the logistics of getting all agricultural residue bringing it to a facility getting this product made so transportation emissions will be there so a lot of things will go into that so are we are they really sustainable like how to uh, quantify that uh, are, are the industries looking into that aspect in terms of lca or something like that yeah, uh, sustainable packaging, uh, material material uh, system will definitely look at the LCA because life cycle analysis is essential to introduce a new material into it. Another thing that we look at is the sustainable packaging is the packaging which can be, because there is there are so many R's, you know, reuse, recycle, reuse. So the, if the reusable packaging is also a sustainable packaging. If you have a package material, which can be used again and again, it's you see its strength, you make it such that it can be opened up easily, material taken out and put back. So the, that is one of the sustainability concepts, which really do not have to go back to all these things. But definitely when we are introducing newer material, we should see the life cycle ass assessment. The other part is, Easily, we are switching over to paper that from plastic. That paper is has the worst consequence as far as the environment is concerned. <laughs> because we are not using only recycled paper or the paper made out of material, non-timber non material. Everything has some wood base. So that is another part of it. So we should not blindly switch over to paper. <laughs> we should ensure that what paper we use is sort of paper which has come from a secondary source or is it is a paper which is not going to be uh, uh, affecting the environment that that is one thing definitely the sustainability has to link link with the uh, uh, material in the case of material the other part is the design design is something which you can alter to make it the, with, with the same material so that you use lesser material lighter material so that best best thing is if you can use the same um, quantum of uh, material for four different units rather than one unit, then also it becomes safe. And so there is a question as well as on the economic aspect of it. Like when uh, some company is trying to go for sustainable packaging, yeah. typically it ends up costing a bit more. So are there any uh, like a government uh, incentive? Yeah, uh, yeah there are because we, we are also in dialogue with a lot of uh, packaging companies because I'm a part of the packaging association. So where we where the industry says that if I can myself get back the package and reuse it, then it becomes economic because the whole cost of getting the raw material, processing it, making it. Into, so we want to make such pa packages which can be returned to the owner. So one such experiment with Amazon worked for me because I did a little short uh, experiment in during the COVID time. You know, they were doing that. They were they. I said, you just deliver the internal material, take back the package. They, at that time, there was not separate channel for taking back. Today, there is a separate channel. There are four different units working on it. Then it's becoming difficult. But at that point of time, there were six to seven events in incidences where they took back the package. And they just delivered me. I said, this gives an ease for the customer to see the material. Is it my the material that I required, ask for it? And then and there, they accept it or they reject it. So that, because they don't have to use another team for collecting the rejects. So they agreed for it, but I think it's not being continued. That's what is disappointing for me. But some of the others like Prestige, Godrej, both of them have accepted that because when I asked them to return and if I buy an exchange, you take the old material, you take the package, they have done it. By Godrej, now whenever they deliver refrigerator or washing machine, etc., or AC, they they take the package away. They take it back. They don't uh, deliver it with the package unless you ask for it. And there's just a small question, like I'm, I'm not sure about that. Medicine covers, can it be returned back to medical students? No, no, okay. medicine no, covers is not, no. Yeah, that's what Actually, I that, that I also saw the question. No, it's yeah. not like that. That it's is the only, 
that is a big bottleneck for us because yes. that's a combination of material yeah. and because of the need for protecting the medicine and its value because the medical you cannot compromise the two areas where we cannot compromise is because after the covid experience we cannot go do away with the disposables in the medical practice similarly yeah. the pharmaceutical industry is not prepared to accept any other thing because the packaging that they do is very safe and the it, it the shelf life of the medicine is very much very important otherwise it will get damaged and degraded any other material will not protect it because the type of uh, casing they do with one side foil one side plastic and sealing it in a um, um, and uh, aerobic and uh, what do you call it a scientific manner so it really helps so that they won't they won't compromise these are two areas we have to wait for a long time till we can substitute thank and you, one thing you. we have told is when the bulk buying bulk drug buying is there you can always bottle it yeah. and that that is the only option otherwise most yeah. of the foil system is the best because one at a time when you are consuming yeah Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so this up, there is a question which kind of relates to some of the work you have done before. So I, I saved it for you. It says that uh, why don't we have some sort of collecting machine at metro stations and maybe in the mall, like we go to Germany, you see that you bring your old bottles, you get a uh, yeah. little bit of uh, money, like a uh, cash uh, coupon and which you can use in the same store. So something yeah. similar concept, this gentle uh, like Arun Ishing, is asking that why we cannot, be, in, as part of EPR, we involve those basic idea where we can return the bottle in the form of getting something so that people will be encouraged to bring it to the metro station or to the movie or to the mall and uh, do that. Uh, so uh, I, I know you are doing that uh, Thaila Pau, I, that, so probably you can, <laughs> I thought it will be mostly, you can talk <laughs> oh, that's about that. So kind <laughs> of you, Dr. Dubey. So kind of you. You know, this concept is going to come tomorrow. This concept, I have been talking even more than this. I am seeing that every mall, there should be a shop by a young entrepreneur where a person will accept all kinds of waste, which can be bulbs to tube lights, to uh, dry waste, to newspapers, to everything. And why not? We were doing plastic law, thelapau, plastic law, mask lejao, you know, these sort of things bring half a kilo of plastic and take a, a, a cotton carry bag, which is durable for 15 rupees. Your product may be 12 rupees. We are ready to give you. There have, we have done this with Coca-Cola. Surajit knows about it. We have done it in 20 cities in the country. You know it. Lakshmi knows it. And many of the people who are there on the web, 100 people are still there. Yes. We have also got RVMs. We reverse uh, reverse vending machines where we have got vending machines first of its kind in India, where we have in the top, we have the bottle and in the bottom, we have a small like this where you put the multi layers. So your, that is all uh, having uh, uh, recordings and uh, the, the slip is coming out at every bottle you put. So we have linked uh, chemist shops, we have linked tea shops. We have linked Kiriana shops that you go there, purchase the material for 100 rupees, they'll give you 5%, 10% on their uh, um, print, on the purchase, you make it. So I think so innovative deposit return schemes are there. You yes. go in uh, India, that has not been very successful as yet. It will take little time to for people's behavior to understand this. But there are simple things. Tomorrow, we need to become entrepreneurs into this system. What is a kabadi wala? With due respect, if, uh, uh, basically a small aggregator is nothing but accepting all. You can go and sell your waste there, anything you want. You can go and do batteries to battery sellers, but even you want to give him tires, he's going to take it. The government has opened up these sectors in a circular economy anyway. I think I've answered it enough. I, I'll take any other question if there is some hand is coming there. I don't know who is it. It's me. Yeah, ma'am ma has his hand up. Yeah, ma'am, go ahead if you want to add. Something. Yeah, I just wanted to add to this because I had a experience with the e-waste. You know, we put those uh, e-waste collection boxes. We somebody used to drop, and next day it will all disappear. Somebody will take it away and get it repaired and use it. So this system will not work in India unless there is a sort of a trap in that that it will not come back. 
and even in in the chief minister of delhi sheila dikshit's office itself it was uh, everything was removed because there was a demonstration yeah. and everything was removed so that is one thing another thing is that what uh, jo uh, sodhi ji said we have this kabaddi wala system but the kabaddi wala system is giving a sort of a, a misconception because they have the they you get paid for the waste as a polluter based principle we should pay for the waste for it yes. to be processed yeah. there has to be yeah. otherwise the recycling systems which he was talking about will not come up who will support who will build the cat who will give the money financing is becoming a big deal even government has not agreed to finance the collection centers so How right now the government them? doesn't even consider them as a, as an industry into the recycling yeah, yeah we have to consider so them as an industry we have to pay for our waste which we generate instead of getting paid that's a very when i go and tell outside people simply <laughs> make fun of it no, no, and, that's fine. and i will also tell you i use this term on um, demystifying epr for an e uh, waste paper which was published i think 10 years ago so you can have a look at it that's a demystifying is here on EP, epr on e waste not the plastic because now it is a broader sense so plastic it has to be it's really it's right point of time when we have to really do the demystification and i really appreciate the heading of this and i that's suppose we I can said. have some we can invite some papers and articles on this because people's viewpoints and suggestions can all be compiled and put together yeah. i think so dr dubey if you like we will work we can work together sure. and put sure. the things sure. together that will yeah. be really good you know the epr is something which is still mystery we mm -hmm. have not really accepted it mm -hmm. we have not really implied it it's only a, it's only that we are assuming that we are doing it but it's far from we are far from it because yes, EPR, yes. it industry. will make the investments into the ecosystem the thing yes. will happen yes it is yes. the process yes. it's just begun yeah. and today we have epr on used oils how many people know about used oils anyway that's a separate <laughs> subject that's a separate subject yeah yeah we have still a lot of questions to there so i will uh, try to take we are already over time we can go for maybe another 5 10 minutes and then we have to close but there is a question from <laughs> dr Dr. Vijay Singhal, uh, that uh, even despite all these mechanisms, we can still see SUPs. So, what is the main problem? Why we are not seeing the alternatives on the ground? Uh, uh, what is the what is the probable reason? So, anybody, if you want to go for uh, Dr. Sodhi or uh, Ma'am or Dr. Uh, Mr. Bosch, can I? Um, may I? Ah, just Sodhi ji, I'm you. No, no, I'm just saying that. I mean, I hey, really Vijay, we know. Is... Vijay, we know. Both of us know. Doctor Singhal, <laughs> Doctor Singhal is asking no, no. this question. Uh, if you know it, <laughs> he uh, should not be asking. He knows the ground reality, no, no. <laughs> which is good. He should prepare. But I'll take a couple of seconds to take it forward. I yeah. see that even though the government has taken up very strong steps uh, in order to really curb the production of the system of the yeah. single use plastics that is a very big step they have taken but it will not stop uh, regulation has also become very strong there have been a lot of fines there have been a lot of enforcement there have been a lot of uh, people who have captured them and confiscated yeah, yeah. materials Seized. all this has gone but it is the consumer behavior which is not changing we are still at the ease of using things one is the cost factor we do not have so much of spare money and we do not have that angle i we have been so enslaved by this whole show sorry to say like that we are really enslaved and our behavior we do not pick the bag when we are going for marketing we do not carry it it is the behavior which has to drive the whole show yeah. the banning and the confiscation and the regulations are just a mechanism which the government is trying to do and uh, it, i think so the consumer has to understand and that understanding we need to give it that the plastic if it is littered is getting into a bad shape to the world plastic as such is a beautiful material and yeah. over the last 100 years but when it gets littered why a bottle of coca cola is not littered is for the fact that it has value and single use because it is made of very thin 
uh, microns. Yes, so it is not picked up and it is strewn all over. I think so when we were trying to push that, uh, is that put it 200 microns, put it 150 microns. Even I had a question uh, that more plastic will come, more plastic will get picked up also. More plastic will get picked up because it will have a value to it. Yeah. Now there are Very two nice things. Sense, one uh, is on so use you. and yeah. the other is on this. I'll stop here. Yeah. Very well, uh, Mr. Mr. Was, I just yes. add just, uh, just one aspect. Huh. You know, our experience with straws and, you know, to indigenize it, you know, it really took a lot of effort from design, how under Indian circumstances that can still work and also sourcing it and finally getting manufacturers to manufacture it, that in India, you know, it was a very, very tough process. So I can only appreciate, I have no knowledge of the other SUPs, but I can only say what Soji said, the economics of it needs to be worked out very well. Uh, I have one uh, experience to share. Last June, last July, when the SUP ban was introduced, I collected, I asked school children to collect from all the houses, a, cu a couple of societies, uh, four societies. I asked them to collect from the household if they have any of these single use plastics in their house, thermocol cups and etc. So they collected a huge quantity. And we, when they brought the quantity, it was so big, I had to stack five cartons full of that because everybody has stacked in their house. And that has to be then, the, 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 then we went to the uh, vendor to really see that it is recycled. So the recycle, they just actually, they, it was shredded, that's all, that we couldn't do much beyond that. Otherwise, what happened was, even from that one carton disappeared because there was a lungard and food was being offered. The carton disappeared and they used it for that. So that's why it's a, it's a difficult thing. But definitely, I, this is one way to bring out, you know, even if you have something left in your house. And also to, to create awareness for, because people do not know which is SUP. That is main thing. People are not knowing which is single-use plastic, though they see all these things. But there is a little dilemma that we have to make sure that people do understand what is the one. So that is one thing. And of course, we have to cut from the beginning, from the entrance point of view, that manufacture has to be strictly prohibited. That is the only way to stop. Thank you. So there is a question on, say, in India, what is the mechanism in which producers collectively collect and take financial responsibility for their waste? Are there like PRO that represents all of the producers? Like, do we have PROs out there which represents a variety of producers that we have? PROs are very few. It is basically yeah. under the EPR, those who are showing EPR compliances, they do that. They do the compliances and they do the collection. So, but... As far as the plastic is concerned, the classification, the identification of different plastics, the, uh, uh, the understanding of where to segregate, where to push for the recycling is becoming a problem. In, in e-waste, this was very feasible because they could do that. And PRO also worked. But PROs are still making a lot of dummy papers. That is the problem. There is not... We, the, we don't need PROs. We need, we don't need. We organizations. Don't need. We yeah. want business organizations we want the this producers themselves. Yes. yes, business organizations. The brand owners are looking for good business organizations. And PROs have confused become, the whole issue. PROs no, we don't need PROs. We PROs need have done business. a lot of mess. Otherwise, e-waste was being somewhat streamlined, but they came business into their interventions have spoiled us. Yeah. Yeah, e-waste anyway. is still 90% is going to informal sector. Right? Informal sector, yes, yeah. because the, these PROs are also by taking the bulk and uh, de delivering yeah. it to them. That's all. They become a wire media for that. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Post, there is a question on business model. Uh, kind of it was, uh, he, since uh, the question mentions your company there, so how the business model being modified to collect back SUP in India? Uh, can the extensive logistics and marketing channel from F SMG, FMCG companies like uh, Hindustan uh, Coca-Cola Beverage be harnessed to set up reverse logistics to uh, for the consumer packaging waste? So that uh... you know, Professor Dubey, this is one of my favorite questions. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is something that I spent a lot of time, you know, thinking about. 
what we are doing right now is through what is called nft bins you know which is uh, essentially electronic bins you know which collect from what we call the key accounts etc you know where a lot of bottles etc get accumulated and also reverse vending machines but the larger play you know as the question the person who has asked the question correctly has pointed out you know the reverse logistics you know across the value chain that we have and we are trying to work on them distributors retailers etc how some of these valuable plastic can be brought back for recycle content thanks a lot thank you so it's uh, there was uh, some uh, in terms of uh, so there is a question on since we talked about pro already so we will uh, uh, do that to get uh, will not worry about that question we talked about compostable as well so one thing uh, which uh, does come up many times is that see we are worrying too much about putting up these uh, uh, different systems in terms of alternative sustainable packaging but if we just don't do any of these things and do a very effective plastic waste management will that be easy that's an open question to all three of you like sometimes uh, when we discuss solid waste management in my class this kind of discussion come up why we are worried too much about this uh, coming up with agricultural based bio based this based see plastic came because we were worried about paper cutting all the trees yeah and uh, glass being too breakable that's what coca cola in 1969 they moved from uh, 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 glass to plastic so rather than worrying about all these things let's focus on having proper plastic waste management and maybe some yes, limited sir. sub reduction sub reduction will that solve the problem like just in uh, open question to all three of you i 100% agree with you because it's the lack of effective implementation which we did not visualize at that time that we have put so many paraphernalia i showed you a plethora of rules that is not required at all once consolidated rule where we really direct the plastic which is recyclable goes for recycling which is not recyclable goes for road making or other purposes even energy production that means you just channelize the waste to a um, end, end of life product and waste into a system so that it doesn't uh, 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 litter around for littering part purpose we should only cons consult the uh, we should only consider the consumer who is responsible for litter only we need to only tap the consumer the business will automatically happen once there is enough even if they want to recycle if we want to have a good scale recycler we if we have this offhand small small fellows it will create more problem and pollution if we want to have a standardized recycling and good recycling technology we need to have the quantity this is what we are really missing both in e-waste plastic batteries everywhere the quantum is not there for the big players to really take it up that's why can we I, have so many small spill players can i add some value yes yeah please please go ahead okay you know you are absolutely right uh, when i was trying to say that you see we have created habitats and we have divided them and subdivided them to feel make the habitats work in a com comprehensive way and today we have a law in delhi that a school child child should not go beyond a 5 km radius school because you have to have your child in that school so you know we never visualized that the packaging is going to become a such a big problem and today the consumption has gone so high people are saying 46% is plastic packaging of the which is coming in the form of packaging 46% of plastic use so collection of that is uh, because we have got a problem across we are trying to find hit and uh, trial methods in and across but i think so the best way forward would be to get decentralized sorting and segregation centers given the hands of the informal sector let them segregate that in a systemic manner it will take some time for people to realize that they have to do segregation at home and that segregation at home has to go in a segregated manner to the final destination which is that segregation sorting center in a decentralized form and from there it can go to different channels 
And I think so, this is a very simple process, but it sounds very easy, but it's a difficult way. We know we have been managing 20 odd cities, MRF setting them up. We call them MRF because it's a recovery center. It is not, you're not changing the form of plastic. It doesn't require any legal permissions. And there are informal people who are already doing this. We have to create space for them in order to really bring them a part of the system. And that's where the inclusivity comes, opening up businesses. We have to have young minds, those who are listening here, to really come up with as business organization. Mind you, plastic is a paying business. It's not a waste. It is a paying business. I have seen that. And in the last 12 years, I have seen that we have partnered with ULBs. Now the partnerships with ULBs have gone off. Still the people, those who are managing, they are managing good profits at even three tons per day of dry waste, not plastics. Plastic is only 40% of that. That's about a ton and a half maximum per day. It's giving you profit. So I think so, Dr. Dubey, we need to have young some students of yours to really come up and really invest into the system of decentralized way of working. And government is very keen. I'll stop here. So, yeah, Mr. Bosch, you want to add something? Or? No, I think enough has been said. Uh, the only thing which I would like to add is, you know, whatever, uh, you know, we, we do by trying to reach the economies of scale, uh, obviously it has to create jobs and it has to be a low carbon kind of a pathway. And as you know, Professor, you know, the kind of emission factors which are there in the various options that we choose, I think these should be very, very well thought out, educated decisions because we are a very large country and any major change that we bring will have far reaching consequences, you know, into the circular economy of tomorrow. So that's the only point I wanted to add. So I think for the, it's already uh, 625 here in India. So we need to wrap it up, which we went uh, uh, beyond our time. So any closing thought from any of our panelists, you want to share something and then uh, we'll uh, close it. Uh, Big thank you. So, so again, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank Indeed. you very so, much. So thank you. Thank you to the panelists. We could not take some of the questions, but they were slightly off. Uh, we I kind of indirectly answered those questions. So I kind of, uh, uh, I'm sorry for those audience whose question we could not take directly because of the interest of time. But you can always reach out to us. We are uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, all of, uh, like four of us, uh, we are there. And if you need any time, any yeah. help, I think more than, we'll be more than happy to uh, like answer your questions there as well. So over to Akancha. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rubey. And thank you to the panel for taking time out and sharing your uh, thoughts and valuable inputs to this discussion. I know a day a day also would be less for having this discussion and answering all the queries. And we would especially thank all the attendees for participating and interacting with the panelists. And we can see that uh, there are many people who are joining from various fields and participating in this discussion. So thank you all. And uh, just for information that this uh, webinar is recorded and uh, will be uploaded on our website and YouTube channel, as I mentioned in the beginning as well and to stay updated on such uh, future events that we've been regularly discussing uh, through we waste wise uh, you know webinars we request you all to stay updated through our uh, newsletter and uh, our social media handle so thank you all good evening to everybody and uh, we meet hope to see you all and let's have these waste dialogues uh, continuously in circulation yeah. and let's waste wise thank you Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank bye bye. You. Thank you. Thank you.